Good morning, everyone. Boys, Pastor Q, thank all you guys for joining us here for our 9 p.m., 9 a.m. service here at the Harborside Hotel. Hope you guys are blessed by the message this morning. Just thank God for allowing you guys to uh, check it out this morning with your phones, your family, and friends. We just want to bring you the word of God this morning. Hope you guys are blessed by it. At this time, we have our very own Connie Cuff to come up as we do every Sunday to give us the uh, inspirational message of the day. And she's going to give us that. So, Connie, come on up. We'll have our inspirational message, and then we will have the uh, teaching of the word this morning coming out of the book of John, chapter 12. So, once Connie reads, then we'll go ahead and turn the book of John, chapter 12. We'll go ahead. Good morning, everybody, and welcome morning. to Word Movers. Once again, God has allowed us to be here for another service. Yes. Um, and we thank him for that. Um, before we start, I, I just feel overwhelmed and happy today for some reason. But <laughs> through this week, this Kobe Bryant stuff weighed a little bit on me. And it felt like I knew him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank God. Thank God. I don't know what I'm gonna say right now, but I know that I felt a big sympathy. And it, I think it comes from coming to church every day and learning about God and His goodness and His word. And it comes from Pastor Q. And when I first met Pastor Q in the gym, he said, I said, since you were a pastor, why do good things, bad things happen to good people all the time? Because I didn't believe he was a pastor. And I asked him that. He actually sat down on one of those weight benches and talked to me and told me why. So that helped me to understand about Kobe Bryant's death. So I understand a little more. A little better, and when I went to sleep, woke up the next morning, I felt better about it. And another thing that made me feel better was that he said he went to church mm -hmm. that morning. That's right, mm -hmm. so I know that God is good, regardless of the bad things that happen in our lives. Because he didn't say that, he didn't say that but the bad things wouldn't happen, they're gonna happen to us, whether we good or bad or rich. Yeah. Of course. That's right. That's right. And we yeah. have to accept and know that God is good. Yes. And He knows what's best for us. We might not know, but He knows. Yes. So we have to take comfort in knowing that God knows what's best for us. Yes. So I learned all of that sympathy and understanding God's word through Pastor Q. And I wanted to thank him for, for that. Oh, I appreciate you, Pastor Kim, because that's what helped me to understand and learn. That's why I come to church day after day, day after day, and Sunday after Sunday. And yes, you may see me at the go go. <laughs> I do get up on Sunday and come to church. You know, but I do want to thank you, Pastor Q. Because I understand a lot of things, not just his death, but a lot of things better since coming to church. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you also for letting me read this word. Mm -hmm. Because he didn't have to let me do this, but he thought that I had something to offer his congregation. And I appreciate that. Amen. 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 I'm sorry for going off That's okay. Okay. Just wait. We needed to hear it. We needed to hear it. And when you see me, I'm not just all dressed up and whatever. I come here to hear the word and to be a better person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's so right. Thank you for this. The word I'm going to talk about today is called Make It Attractive. And it's coming from Colossians 4, chapter 4, verse 2. Walk in wisdom toward those who are outside redeeming the time. Make it attractive. The story is told of a young boy who, during a bygone era, was aboard a passenger train attempting to make money selling apples. He made his way through the train car saying, apples, apples anyone? Does anyone want an apple? Would you like to buy an apple? When he got to the rear of the car, he still had a bag full of apples and no money. A gentleman who noticed his plight took him aside and asked him to see one of the apples. He proceeded to go to the front of the train 
polished it conspicuously with a napkin and then walked down the aisle eating the apple and commenting on how delicious and refreshing it was. Then he told the boy to try it again. This time he sold every apple. The difference, the apples have been made attractive to the potential customers. This story can remind us of one way we can interest others in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make it attractive to them. Show them the difference it has made in our own lives. That is best done by following the words of Paul in Colossians 5. Colossians 4, verse 5. Be wise, he said, in the way you act toward outsiders. Make most of every opportunity. If we show kindness, love, and compassion to others, those who observe us will wonder why. And that may give us an opening to tell them about the beauty of God's love for them. Just like our testimonies. When we give our testimonies, make it attractive. Thank you. Amen. 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 The uh, 20th verse, thank all you guys for joining this morning here at Word Moves. Uh, the book of John, chapter 12, verse 20. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. That's where our teaching will come from this morning. It says, the fruitful grain of wheat. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus answered him, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Father God, for all you're doing today, Father God. Be with our hearts and minds. Create us a clean heart, renew the right spirit within us, oh Father God, right now. Uh, allow your word to be able to penetrate, oh Father God, the deepest parts of our hearts and minds in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, piggybacking off what uh, Connie was saying um, a week ago, you know, I heard about the Kobe Bryant situation too, and the Holy Spirit brought me to the scripture where it says that Jesus said that his hour has come, and then he says that unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, it dies and remains alone, but if it does, it produces much grain. Much grain is a representation of a seed being planted and producing fruit. I often don't question God about what he does, and a lot of us had questions about the Kobe Bryant situation, and God showed me something real deep in the spirit, you know, I saw that Kobe Bryant had some types of Christ of likeness in him. Uh, stopped playing at 38, died at 41. Jesus started his ministry at 30 and died at 33. Three years in between, you know, as God had used Kobe to do something different off the court and start some things and after him starting some things and doing some things, people believe that, that why did God take him? Let me address that. God, God doesn't take us. What God does, he allows things to happen. And the thing about it is, is that God has said he's given us Jesus Christ just in case something go wrong. It's the true, um, what they call life insurance. The life insurance is just like you have car insurance. You don't leave your house planning on getting into an accident, but you have insurance just in case you get an accident. God has given us Christ that just in case something happened, just in case your brakes fail, just in case there's a drunk driver, just in case something goes wrong, you're covered. You know what? God never promised anybody that once you get saved that, you know, I want to die in my sleep. That's just me. I don't want to feel any pain. I don't want to be shot. I don't want to be hit. I just want to die in my sleep. I don't want to feel no pain. I actually rather, I just rather for him to come while I'm still alive so I don't have to feel any pain. I don't want y'all to do no funeral and all the caskets and stuff. I don't want that. I just want to be able to go, like take off, like Superman, be there, right? I don't want all that. I just want to arrive there. You know, I don't want no funeral and all that stuff. I don't want that. I don't want to feel no pain. I don't want to be on hospice. I don't want the flowers. I don't want the balloons. I just want them just to come get me when they're ready, right? People believe that God came and took Kobe Bryant. No, there was a failure somewhere with all the um, P 
people that believe that Kobe Brown was assassinated, whatever happened, at the end of the day is that, you know, we, we read that he was in church service before, you know, the plane crash. But, you know, sometimes that, that doesn't do enough for me, too, because a lot of people in church are not saved either. That's true. You know. You, know, you could be at the liquor store before your accident and you've been playing Powerball, that don't mean you bought something to drink. Yeah. But people say before he got an accident, he was at the liquor store. Yeah. And just assume he was drinking and driving, right? Yes. That's how we do things, right? Yeah. So I asked God, I said, God, why, why, why Kobe Bryant? And as Connie was saying, why does it feel the way he feels? Why feel the way he feels? God says, I allow it to happen because it was going to produce much fruit, but it's going to produce much grain. I said, God, what does that mean? God says, you notice that with Kobe Bryant's death, even in my personal life, I had a friend of mine call me who I hadn't talked to in some years and called me and told me he just wanted to tell me he loved me and he see what I'm doing and he just wanted to let me know that. Yeah. All because of what? Kobe Bryant's death. Yeah. Not just Kobe Bryant. That's the Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and the seven others on the helicopter. Yes. That brought people together. I said, wow, you know, people get shot, killed every day, and a body ain't called and said nothing. I mean, right up the street in Baltimore, they got more murders this year than they have days. Ain't nobody called and said nothing. Hey, I've been doing marches with murders and everything. People, somebody died up the street, and it didn't make you call me and say, brother, it's just in case something happens. But Kobe Bryant dies, and everybody feels it. Girl, man. Girl, dad. Everybody take the pictures with the daughters and stuff, right? Right. I'm, I'm right. teaching them. I'm not being facetious. I'm trying to show you the spirit of God. Yeah. People say, well, Kobe Bryant didn't deserve to die. Who does deserve to die? Who does deserve to die? Jesus didn't deserve to die. Yes. Just like Kobe, he didn't deserve to die. Because, you know, when we look at things like, as Connie was saying, that conversation with Jim, why does bad things happen to good people? And what I have always believed, I was saying the other day, is that I've done funerals for 11 year olds and 10 year olds and 15 years old and people, young people who I don't think deserve to die. And, you know, I don't believe that God makes a mistake, but I truly believe in my heart that stray bullets hit people. Well, stray bullets, stray bullets miss people who weren't ready. Get blessed. Stray bullets missed people that wasn't ready and hit people that were ready. That's just my own personal belief. You don't have to believe it. What if the loving God allowed a stray bullet to hit a kid, right, who's going to go be with him in heaven, right, but miss somebody who would have died in their sins? That gave that person who died a second chance. That's just my way of thinking how God does things because I know that God doesn't mind sacrificing things. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believed in him should not perish but everlasting life. God has a way of sacrificing things. God has, some, God has a way of taking things away to get your attention because something about humans, we only come together when things go wrong. Big mama got to get sick for all y'all to come together to the hospital and get over y'all differences because big mama's sick. Don't, you know, big mama's death brought y'all together because y'all wasn't talking, but now y'all got to do get together and put things together. It forces y'all to break that uncomfortableness and that bitterness and that unforgiveness through death. When somebody dies and certain things happen, notice how life brings you to a place to deal with something that you didn't want to deal with before. Kobe Bryant's, just like Kobe Bryant's death, and as us in funerals, death brings people closer together. So what it does, it produces grain, it produces a fruit. So when, when it seems like something bad is happening through this whole Kobe Bryant situation, it seems like God now has everybody's attention again. So when I look at Kobe Bryant dying, it hurts and it's a bad thing, but the fruit that it has caused is such a good thing. Because we should have been living like we're living right now. The way you feel right now, you should have been living like this. Now everybody talking. See what happened to Kobe Bryant? That's the conversation on the job talk. Wherever you go, ain't that something? Man, you just never know. You just start living like that? Because we, we kind of feel that, you know, tomorrow is promise. That's how we feel. We feel like, you know what? Uh, I read something the other day that said the bet that one of the devil's biggest disguises or misconceptions or... Uh, teachings is that you have time. Mm -hmm. 
I got time. I'm the master of procrastinating. If I don't know how, I don't have to do something to later on, it feels better not to have to do it right now. That's why the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things right now. Choose you this day whom you will serve. I, I mean, my thing is this. Uh, people believe that, you know what, you better get your life right now with God because you've seen how he, you know, took Kobe Bryant. He didn't take Kobe Bryant. He, he allowed it to happen. Uh, just like Kobe Bryant had taken their helicopter a hundred times over and nothing ever happened. But this particular time, it happened. You could take the same route home every time and nothing ever happens. And one day you take that route. Has nothing to do with being good or bad. Has nothing to do with the failure of the helicopter. Is that when he created you, he already knew when you were going to be born. He already knew how you were going to get out of here. Yes. Yes. And guess what? He could have stopped it. Yes. You know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people, Kobe Bryant's kids, family, people like, get, have you ever been upset with God for allowing something bad to happen? You know, that turns into, it don't just draw people to God. It has drawn people away from God. How, how can a loving God take uh, daughters and mothers and fathers and kids? How, how can a loving God do that? But you know, the thing is convenient. We want, we want God to work for us conveniently. Take the bad people. Keep the good people. Kobe Bryant, a loving and father, this he he does all these good things. Why would God take him? It's a bunch of people we know that we'll exchange for Kobe Bryant. <laughs> it's some people who doing nothing with their life. Say, God, take them, not Kobe Bryant. You don't understand purpose. Matter of fact, his ex teammate Lamar Odom said the same thing. He said, I would have rather exchanged my life for Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. Not understanding. I remember when Jesus was getting ready to, when they came to get Jesus. Remember, do y'all remember that Peter <laughs> told Jesus that he would go to the depths for him? And he told Jesus, he said, listen, I will get locked up with you. I, I will die for you. He said, he promised Jesus, he said, listen, I will ride or die. If I got the coke on me and they get caught, Jesus, they ain't gonna, I ain't telling. <laughs> That's what Peter basically said. Yes, he did. I ain't gonna tell about nothing we did. And Peter was confronted. He said, I've never knew him. <laughs> Three times. Three times. Yes. That sounds good you die for somebody else. Yeah. But when it's time to come, you're going to rethink that thing. It sounds good. Man. Yeah. I'm all it. That sounds real good. Mm -hmm. It's hard. The Bible says no greater love than this that a man lay down his life for his friends. Yeah. 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 No, there's no greater love than that. So what I'm saying is that Kobe Bryant's death was such an awakening more than anything. He may have impacted us more in his death than he actually did while he was playing. Because a lot of people hated him when he was playing. Right? Just like we hate, but not to hate him, to see him want to die, but dislike him, cockiness and all that. Now we feel some type of way about him. But I think he's impacted more people in his death than he did in his living. Who else do you know like that? Impacted more in his death more than in his living. Jesus impacted more in his death, more than his living. Martin Luther King, Black History Month, and the rest of you want to name, heard it, tell me, impacted more in their death. Biggie said, you know, body that somebody kills you. Yeah, great retort. Christopher Wallace, you're, you're nobody until somebody kills you. Now it's all about Kobe Bryant. What he did and what he was doing. We found out some things. We found out the relationships and things that he had. And you know what's crazy? Because as everybody has a testimony about Kobe, is the same way Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, and all of them gave their testimony about Jesus. And the, do you know that the Bible is nothing but somebody else's expression of their relationship with God? Mm -hmm. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's somebody else's expression of their relationship with God. And people say, well, I can't believe the Bible. That's somebody else's testimony. Every, if you understand that, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and you read the gospel, notice that some of them share the same stories, but some of them tell it differently. Notice that if you go to your concordance, you can find the same teaching. Sometime in Matthew, you can find it in Mark and Luke, and sometimes you can't find it in Matthew, but you can find it in John. And you say, hey, if they were all together, why don't they all have the same story? It impacted them differently. 
They all told their story the way that they saw it. If you know that, if you know anything about the book of Luke, Luke was a doctor. He gets more in depth because of his education of being a doctor. So they all, so every gospel is somebody's interpretation and testimony uh, or their expression of when they were with Christ. And that's what everybody's doing right now. Watch something with Shaq that was really tear jerking. He talked about his relationship with Kobe and the things that he's going to miss. And, and, you know, there's a saying that my grandmother used to say and the older people say, they say, give me my flowers while I'm still alive. It's too late now. All the flowers and things decked out in front of the casket and all the reflections. And I can't even hear it. I, I want, you know, the Spirit is saying, God wants us to live you know, Lil Wayne released the album Friday called Funeral. It has so much spiritual meaning to it. I got to keep up with hip hop too for the young people. It, it's spiritual. Funeral is, I mean, you know, when we prepare for a funeral, we prepare for death. But let me teach you, when you talk about the funeral, there's a funeral that takes place inside of Christianity. And I'm not, it has nothing to do with a ceremony or a casket. It's a dying to oneself. Amen. Amen. It's that you have to die to yourself. When Jesus was teaching, here, let me get into this teaching. In John chapter 12, verse 23, that Jesus says, the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. While Jesus is talking about getting ready to die, why is he saying glorified? It sounds like he, if I'm beside him because I wouldn't be able to understand the teaching that he's teaching, I'm like, okay, he's getting ready to go down. He's getting ready to bring the angels down. He's getting ready to show who he really is. We, Jews, we're getting ready to be back on top. But he says, I'm getting ready to be glorified in death. How are you glorified in death? He says, because I understand the wheat, the grain, the fruit that death is going to cause. He says, listen, I'm me dying is better than me living because of what it's going to produce. He says, if I stay here, it's not going to produce the fruit that it should, it should produce. So he's teaching. He's saying, listen, this is what he says. Most assuredly, verse 24, look at it. I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. Now listen to what he's saying. Let me get you to understand this. He's saying here, if you understand the teaching, he's saying he's that grain of wheat. Now, in order for a grain of wheat to be able to bring out more, more wheat, it must first die. Notice the Bible said, he who comes after me must first deny himself, take out his cross. When he's talking about death, he's talking about spiritual death. Now, we're getting ready to do a baptism. I'll let you guys know, I think in April we got it planned. For all those who want to get baptized. Bapt baptism is a outward sign of the inward faith, okay? So basically, my baptism is a representation of me going down and coming back up a new person. It represents me going, as Jesus went down into the earth for three days and he came back up. The, the uh, baptism is a form of me being resurrected. So basically, that's why the Bible said that he that is in Christ is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So actually... When you received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you, you started over. You were born again. Amen. Amen. You became a new creature. So that means that the old you was supposed to die. So now I, I've, I'm dead in my old self. My old self was gone. Now I'm alive in Christ and I live for Christ because the agreement, terms of conditions, was that if I die for you, you live for me. Those are the terms and conditions in Christianity. But we change it. Jesus died for me so I can have everything I want to have. Those are not in the terms. You got suckered in to believe that. But if you notice, you go on TV and they say, hey, listen, you can get this for $1 down or three cent down, 10 cent down. And at the bottom is the terms of conditions and the little bold letters that they make them real small. Yeah. There's terms of conditions. As I talked about last week, Pastors and preachers have the ability to draw you in and sucker you and telling you that, hey, listen, Christianity is all about God giving you whatever he wants to give you. That's not true. Actually, when you become a Christian, you die to yourself and you make yourself 
available to God to do whatever he wants to do. So guess what? You can get saved today and God use you to jump in front of a car and push somebody else out of the way and take your life. And you know what? God had every right to do it because you now belong to him. Your life is not your own, meaning God has the right to do whatever he wants to do with your life. He didn't promise you long lasting life in Christianity. But that's the way it's taught. A term I hear, gone before their time. Died too young. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. God don't make no mistakes. No, you, you were born and you did what you were supposed to do. You understand, life is a game. Some people play eight minutes. Some people play the whole game. But that doesn't mean the person who played eight minutes wasn't effective. See, they don't say it. In the, at the end of the game, in Christianity, it's a win-loss column. It doesn't say how many minutes you played. You're not going to be a better Christian than me because you live to see 80 and I only live to see 41. Because mm -mm. guess what? You could have been here 80 years and doing nothing for 79 of those years. No disrespect. You've been an elder in that church for your whole life. But you haven't been a servant. And that's why you're hot the way it is. It's an elder. But you're not a servant. You've been going to the same church for a long time. You're an elder. Still haven't yearned to be a servant. You're not in Christ. You're in church. Yeah, yeah. You're in Christ. Not in church, but you have a title that's been given by your church. But you're not in Christ. So God is not going to reward you more than he's going to reward me because you've been here a long time because you could be in it for a long time. But God doesn't look at the length of time. He look at what you did yeah, yeah. within the time that you was given. Yeah, yeah. You know, the thing about it, you'll find when you get to heaven, people went to church all their lives, right? And reached nobody. I don't know what, what my Christians think they're fine China. <laughs> like, you know, the stuff in your house you don't use. Yeah, sit on the yeah. yeah. sit there and look pretty. Uh -huh. That's what you are. A lot of you. Not uh -huh. you guys, but a lot of them are fine China. Uh -huh. Jesus said that they were dressed up graves, mm -hmm. dressed up coffins. Yes. Look good on the outside, but the inside is death. Look good, have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Now, that's why I don't like church people. I don't, I don't like church people, and I don't like religious people. Because it's just all just dressed up to look like something that is actually not. Helping nobody. Sitting back, going to church every Sunday, thank you, judging people that look like me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I tend to gravitate to them. Because I know the Bible and <laughs> it's a great thing. And since I really, really know the Bible, I know that you're faking. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a scary thing. The scary thing is that we study the same Bible and I see you doing stuff See, I used to think when I was in church that um, it was just something wrong with me. Come to find out, y'all was putting on. Y'all was making me feel like the Holy Ghost was skipping over me. But y'all was putting your own Holy Ghost into activation. Because when I looked at the, 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 the scripture, the teaching of what happened in the book of Pentecost, it said that the Holy Ghost fell on everybody in the room. But past, there's only four people here speaking in tongues. I can't stand that racist Holy Spirit. He ranks so racist. So prejudiced, Holy Spirit. Because he's only fell on a few of you in here. Because only he's running around. And all y'all speaking in tongues except me. Such a prejudiced Holy Spirit. Hasn't fallen on me. Is it because I'm not there yet? 
seems prejudice, right? Why is everybody running around speaking in tongues, hollering, and not me? Have you ever noticed that don't happen at word movies? Because the people go as the pastor goes. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible talks about speaking in tongues, and he says, you know what? You shouldn't even be speaking in tongues if there's no interpreter. That's right. That's right. That's right. People that speak in tongues are the ad libbers for their pastor as hype men are to rappers. That's what I said. People that speak in tongues <laughs> are the hype men to their pastor. It's uncalled for. It's doing nothing. And why are you doing that? When it says not to do that. But we, we do it to make ours to, to basically differentiate ourselves from the people besides. Because I want you to think, little person who don't ever come here alive, <laughs> that my relationship is here. Can I teach you, if you stop speaking in tongues, we probably can get more souls won because you're offending the people because you're out of place. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your tongues have become very offensive yeah. because you know what? You're not even supposed to be doing it and you make other people feel like they don't have it too. I thought God said he was no respecter of persons. Yes. So if the Holy Spirit falls on you, it should be in a room for me too. We should all feel the Holy Spirit. He said with two or more gather, he's in the midst. But you're the only one with the Holy Spirit. God is no respecter of persons. Another reason why God didn't not stop Kobe Bryant from dying because God didn't say, hey, on the helicopter, we've got great coaches, great fathers, great people, and can't forget five-time NBA champion Kobe Bryant, 18 years, I mean, you know what I'm saying, 18 scoring titles, 20 years in the league. The Bible says that when Noah got saved, it said he found grace. That means favor, unmerited favor. Meaning that you got to understand when, when God decided to ruin the earth with a flood and I used to read the Bible and it said that Noah found grace before I understood what grace meant. I thought Noah was here doing something good to be chosen by God. That, then I found out that grace has nothing to do with bad or good. It's just God choosing because he can. People say, why did God choose you? Because he can. Grace means me doing something with no explanation. No explanation at all. Grace favor means yeah. me doing something and don't owe you no explanation for it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's what makes you break down and cry. You say, God loves me with no explanation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm going to do this because you just because I want to. But why? Just because I want to. Yeah. It doesn't need an explanation. Guess what? God said, I don't owe no explanation to anybody. That's why when God shows you dreams and visions and he says things he's going to do, people around you that know you, that know you, mm -hmm. that know you, Look for explanations. I know you. So how can God do something for you whom I know? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? I know you. You're a carpenter. You're a Joseph boy. You're Mary's son. Can anything? I know him. He can't be dead. Jesus was glorified because, because of his death. And what his death was going to do. So God allowed it to happen. Why? Because it was going to do as Connie was saying. God has our attention now. Now the thing about it is. How much time that's going to elapse after we do the funeral for Kobe Bryant. Are we going to go back to living like that didn't even happen? Because if you were here. In the time of Dr. Martin Luther King. Did I ask some of the elders been here? They said it was almost equivalent or greater when Martin Luther King was assassinated. And guess what? We're out here living like Martin Luther King didn't march and he didn't have a dream and he wasn't a civil rights leader. We cried for a little while, then things went back to the regular schedule program. All week long you've been feeling Kobe Bryant picks uh, 
memorial, uh, can't even see it. They're doing all these uh, memorials for him all week long. And, and, and we're feeling this. We're, we're hugging our loved ones. We're, we're telling people, listen, if I did anything to you, just want to apologize. That's fruit. Yeah. That's, that's fruit. It has brought me to a realization of my own personal life, recognizing that, hey, listen, that could have been me. But I'm still here. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies and remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much grain. Jesus, Jesus basically saying that if when he dies, he's going to produce much grain. Grain is a representation of producing what? More fruit. You know, if you if you keep your finger right there, right? But you go to, I think it's what is John? John 15, right? If you look at the fifth verse. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Yes. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Now, you know what? Before I got into the real teachings of the Bible, you know, the scripture tells us in the book of uh, Genesis, one of the quotes that says, when God says, be fruitful and to multiply, I used to think being fruitful meant riches and blessings. Because that's what they teach you in the prosperity message. Because you know, if you're shocked with the Bible, you can make the Bible say what you want it to say. If you're shocked. If you know how to manipulate it, you can make it say, I can tell you right now that he says that, you know what? Your fruit is all the things that you're going to get from being in church. I can tell you it's going to bring you cars, houses, clothes, good job. That ain't what the fruit is. The fruit, you know what the fruit is? Yeah, we're going to get into that right there. Fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy, long suffering. Fruits of the Spirit, as John is right. But he says you're going to bring forth much fruit. Fruit is you, you know this, he said they sow it without to sow forth seed, right? We understand that the seed represents the word of God. Once the word of God is planted into my heart and my life, it's going to produce something because it ain't seed. Now, the Bible tells us also that you shall know a tree by its fruit. So the Bible says that you and I are a tree. You don't know it, but you are a tree. Something I have a question in Bible study about when I get to heaven is that God, in the book of Genesis, around in the, in, in the first three verses, the, the first three chapters, in the Bible, was those really trees or was it really people? I have a question about that. And I'm going to tell you why. Remember in the Bible where the man was blind. Jesus spit on the ground, made some clay, touched the man's eyes. He asked the man, what did he see? The man says, I see people walking around like trees. Trees don't walk around. Only on the Wizard of Oz that that has ever happened, where the tree got up, talked, and walked. You remember that? But trees don't walk around. What the blind man saw, he saw spiritually into the spiritual realm. And then when Jesus touched his eyes again and asked him what he saw, he says, I see people like you see them. But the first time he touched his eyes, he says, I see people walking around as trees because God look at people like trees. We are trees. That's why I said, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bring forth his fruit in his season. You are a tree. Yeah, you are a tree. Now, Based off of the seeds you have, how the word takes root in your heart. Yeah. What type of fruit you have. Yes. See, I know a lot of trees, but some trees got bad fruit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't try not to talk to them trees. <laughs> See what they did, they used to go up to a tree and grab an apple or a pear or something, taste the fruit. And say, that, that, that tree got good fruit. That's how we decipher people. It's not called judging. You got bad fruit. That's what it is. You, you got bad fruit. Let's just be honest. So, so I'm the only one that goes to the grocery store and picks through the fruit. <laughs> you, know the, you know the thing about fruit is, you can pick through it and pick the pretty ones and it'd be the one mm, that's still be one. Better. Right. Oh, okay. 
Anybody shake the watermelon up and listen to it? I don't know where we get stuff like that from. I want the greenest of the greenest apples because I'm going to set them on the table in the kitchen for decoration. The greenest of the greenest, the redest of the redest, the yellow of the yellow is bananas. And I'm going to tell you the best banana. The one got the little black on it. I'm preaching. The best banana carnage is not the one with nothing on it. It's the one that's getting ready to go bad and I'm getting ready to cut up and put in them cornflakes. That's the best banana. The best banana is the one that got the stains on it, about to go bad. And I got to cut that front piece off because I'm scared it's going to poison me, but I eat the rest of it. That's the best banana in the world. Not the one that has it all together. Still green. Not knowing anything. That's what they call you in the street. We don't know nothing. They say you green. I want my banana been sitting there for a while. Oh, see, sometimes you buy bananas out of season. And you got to bring them home and sit until it's their season. <laughs> Can I teach you from the Holy Spirit? God says, I bought you out of season. And I'm keeping you around until it's your season. Because guess what? If I put you out there before time, your fruit won't be good. I don't care how long you've been in church, you got bad fruit. Can I teach you that sometimes when you want to start your ministry in your church before God told you to, you end up offending more people than you actually help. There's somebody in church right now that's ready to start their own church. I'm going to tell you what. Bitter, hurt, broken people start churches. Oh, yeah. All day long. The worst kind of people in the world start ministries. You know why? Because they want control. They want power. They see what it gets. I'm going to get my own church. And I'm going to create more bitter people like myself. And those same bitter people are going to run away to people that God is really trying to reach. It works effectively for the devil. Yeah. That will sit there in your church and say, hey, man, listen, you can do the same thing he does. Go start your own. And you start your own bitter church. Hurting people. Running people away. Yeah. Not understanding the truth of the gospel. Yeah. Teaching people the way you want them to be taught. Mm -hmm. You want power. Mm -hmm. You want people to follow. You have nothing to do with God. To see the devil, what he does, he sat right there in the church with you. He told you to start your own before your season because he knows if you start something bitter and broken, you're going to create more like that. That's why more people are starting churches more than anything. It's a good business, right? But in the term of you making money, you're running people away. They said the big portion of the United States of people in the world are church hurt. You know why? Because somebody took upon a calling but didn't understand what it was all about. So the devil won't stop you from opening a church. He won't. Especially if he knows that your heart is going to be not to a place that will be effective in God. Because what you'll do is push people away. It's so hard to get people to come to church now and tell them that this is a solid ministry because they've been to so many bad ones. Yeah. Oh, Pastor, you, I've been in church. You can't, it ain't going to be nothing different. Y'all gonna be asking for money before I get through the door. <laughs> because you don't have a solid ministry. Then when you find a solid ministry, you think they are like all other ones, just like we are in our broken relationships. Don't we think everybody is like the last person? Yeah. <laughs> Some people do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't going down. I know what y'all all about. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Jesus says, listen, you know what's crazy? And I was reading in, um, go back a chapter. Go to the book of John chapter 11. I want to show you something. A very, very, very popular scripture. Remember, remember when Lazarus was getting ready to die? And Jesus didn't show up? He actually showed up late. He showed up after Lazarus had already died. But, but Jesus said something that tied into this. Day. He said, Lazarus' sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God. 
And, and if I was listening to that, I'm like, well, I don't understand. His sickness is not unto death, but unto the glory of God. But Jesus, Lazarus actually died. So how did that bring God glory? He said the same way Kobe Bryant brought me glory. I said, what does that mean? He says, listen, I'm going to win more souls at Lazarus' death than I will if I heal him from whatever he's going through right now. This was something God showed me. He says, Q, do you notice more people come to your funeral than to your bedside? I said, that's a good teaching. Why is that? Why don't as many people visit me when I'm sick than when I die? Is it safe to say, off ratio, you get more visitors at your death, come on, than at your sickness? Because I asked for help and I couldn't get none. Oh my God. You couldn't help me, but you would come to my funeral. Listen to what I'm saying. You couldn't help me, but you would come to my funeral and pay your respects. I don't need to help them. But guess what? My funeral drew you, not my sickness. Yeah. That's how we are as a people. I'm going to show you respect once you die. Uh -huh. I'm going to sit back and hope you get better while you're living. <laughs> Listen to the contradiction in that. Yeah. I break my neck, Keisha, to make you a funeral mm -hmm. and let you sit on hospice. Yeah. So listen, this is what Jesus, God told me this. He says, I did it that way because at Lazarus' funeral, there was going to be more people that come out for Mary and Martha. Yeah, amen. When he was sick, how anybody went to visit him? He says, guess what? I said his sickness wasn't into, wasn't to death. It's for the glory of God. Because when he dies, I'm going to be able to reach more people than from his sickness. So I'm going to let him die. You know why? It's going to be more people there when he dies. Listen. John chapter 11. Verse 18 says this. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Listen. After he died. Not why he was living. They come, listen, who joined? Many mm -hmm. of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. They wasn't comforting them when he was sick. Can, can I tell you something as religious people we do? Well, I'll take people, some people, I don't know what it is, but you'll agree with me. We love showing up at people's funerals, don't we? Something about that. You, you know, it's something that you don't understand. I'm going to get there in a minute, but I got to show it to your funeral. I got to make your funeral. You know why I make your funeral? It's not for you. It's for me. It's my guilt. It's to make everybody else think I was there with you two then. Yeah. 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 So what this is what Jesus says. Jesus says, I can't get everybody in one place while you're sick. But... If I get you to fall, get, I'm, get, I'm going somewhere. If I get you to fall or to die or fall off, listen. Yeah. When I'm doing good, right, I don't get a lot of people that congratulate me. But as soon as I do something wrong or fall off, yeah. oh my God. Everybody want to comfort you when it go yeah. wrong. Yeah. Comfort or comfort. Yes, yeah, they comfort or comfort. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you something too. Everybody, let me tell you what about people. We tend to not celebrate you, but we more want to comfort you when you fall. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because here it is, the crab and the burrow syndrome. Mm -hmm. Something about people that gravitate you when you are in a place where they are. Yeah. yeah. So when you fall or you fall off, people tend to gravitate to you because now they feel better yeah. about them and you're no longer 
touching their insecurities. Yeah. Well, that's messed up what happened. Such and such. Man, I'm just reaching out to you, let you know, man, I don't need it now. <laughs> I, I actually, I would have loved the encouragement. You can't encourage me when I'm doing better than you, but you can comfort me when I fall off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So guess what God does? He allows you and I to fall off. You know what God is doing to you right now? A lot of people don't understand. God is going to allow you to fall off. You know why? Because it's going to draw people to your story. Yeah. God is tricky. You know what he does? He allows you to fall off, draw people to a losing story just to make you a winner. What he does, he just... <laughs> you, ever go, you ever see, he starts a watch party like Facebook, right? He draws everybody in when you're doing bad. And he says, I got the attention now. I got you. See, what he does, he allows something to go wrong. He knows that once something go wrong, everybody's going to draw to you. People don't draw to you when you're doing good. They draw to you when you're doing bad. Right? He says, so look, now, and listen, here's what we do. Great teacher, man. Right? When I'm doing bad, I hide it. When I'm doing good, I post it. Right now, somebody are posting the good things and hiding the bad things. Because we don't want nobody to know what's really going on. But the Bible says that stuff that's done in the dark shall come to light. So know what God says? I'm going to let everybody know your mess. I'm going to expose it. Because once they know your mess, I have them all now as an audience. I'm getting ready to give them all a testimony about you. That's why we hide things we don't want people to know. That's why Paul said, I boast in my firmness. I didn't understand what Paul meant. Paul said, I boast in my infirmities. He means, he says, listen, I go around bragging about the things that's wrong. Mm, yeah. I didn't understand that. Now I do because, you know, I've learned social media. And though I won't do it, but there's people who get on the social media and hold their phone up and, and start a whole tear session, right? And we're looking like, why are you doing that? You know, but they know that this is a draw. Attention. Yes. Nobody cares about my promotion. People draw in when I'm doing bad. That's what drew them all in. Actually, if another great teaching is this. When Samson messed up, they put Samson in a room in a Colosseum. And if you guys you guys know the story. And they put him there and it brought all the Philistines together. You know what? Samson couldn't defeat the Philistines when he was alive, right? But at his death, or as they were mocking him, it brought all the Philistines in one room. Look at the promotion. They were afraid of him, wouldn't come near him when he was alive. But when he was chained, it drew them all together. It drew them all together that when they put Samson beside the two pillars, and he was given his strength back from God, he had all of them in one room. Right? Yeah. And God destroyed, they said that when he got his strength back, that he killed more Philistines at his death mm -hmm. than he did when he was alive. Amen. Amen. Let me teach you something, right? Lazarus had more people at his funeral those that did like him and those that didn't like him. Yeah. And Jesus knew that. He says, listen, it's not a great enough testimony to heal you from being sick. I need to wait till I get all of them together. Now that I got all of them together, now I'm going to show the glory of God. Mm -hmm. After Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead, it was known all across town. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because Jesus built a big enough audience. Mm -hmm. And then if you know anything, if you go in the book of John chapter 12, that after that happened, they wanted to kill Lazarus. Nobody knows that. You go into John chapter 12, the next chapter, when Lazarus was raised from the dead, they wanted to kill him. You know why? Because he now was the grain. He now was the wheat. Every time people saw him, they knew his story. You know the thing about it is, God will have people 
to know your story than bring you back from it. Now, I'm the glory of God. That's why you shouldn't hide where you've been or what you've done. Because you are the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. This, you should tell people, listen, I, you shouldn't be ashamed to tell people what you used to do, what you're doing, where he's bringing you from, because that's the glory of God. God allows it to get worse before it gets better. Let me say this, because I'm getting ready to close. He talks about in the book of Galatians, the fruits of the Spirit, love, peace, joy, long suffering, hope. All these things, all these fruits are produced once you receive the seed, and the seed is the word of God. Once I receive the seed of God, then my tree is going to bring forth good fruit. That's what it's all about. But listen, in order to be able to bring forth the fruit of God, you and I help to be able to die to ourselves. And then when you and I die to ourselves, then we're able to be able to bring forth much fruit, right? And the, it's a spiritual death. The spiritual death represents me and you giving up our own lives. Now, of course, someone like Kobe Bryant would take his own life, right? But if he got to the pearly gates, as people believe it is, right? And gets the pearly gates and say, God, why did you take me away from my kids, my family, and all that, right? Then God opened up the clouds. Say, Kobe, look down at the Staples Center. Look at me bringing you here has done to the world. You ain't never had this many fans. Kobe. I got people cheering for you that couldn't stand. I got people apologizing to other people yes. because I took you. Yes. You didn't just, you ain't just die. Right. You had purpose. Yes. The Bible said, blessed is the man that endured temptation, but when he has tried, he shall receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised him. You know, the Bible says, lay not up for yourselves treasures here yes. on earth, but lay up for yes. yourselves treasure in heaven. heaven. Kobe Bryant chased a six ring, had five, never got it. His reward in heaven is going to be great because of his death. Yeah. Now, the difference between Jesus and the Kobe Bryant that Kobe Bryant didn't lay down his life. Jesus did. Yeah. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. Kobe, liked it. Kobe Bryant didn't know he was dying. Jesus knew he was dying because Jesus said, the scripture he said, my hour has come. Mm -hmm. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. If I be lifted up, helicopter, if I be lifted, I hope you get it. I hope you get it. Helicopter, lifted up, I will draw. Same about Kobe Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Lifted him up. Thank you, Lord. And Good I will draw all men unto me. Good yeah. God. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Type of Christ. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank, thank you for this time. Yeah. Thank you for blessing us, keep us in all things, Father God. Thank you for making this word possible. Yes. May it touch the hearts and minds of the believers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm the Lord Pastor. Thank you, God, for rocking. Let's give the Lord a hand, praise.